Good day, mates. Welcome to the wild world of the Rhetoric Wrangler. Today, we're deep in the heart of Aristotle's swamp. I'm your host, Cleo Persway, and I've got a hold of something really special to show you. I found a group of appeals crocodiles. Now, these beauties aren't just any old crocs. They're so much smarter, but also so much lazier. They've developed a truly unique hunting strategy. They've adapted to use the power of persuasion to convince others to feed them so they don't have to hunt for themselves. Brilliant, right? I just love these guys. Let's take a closer look at how they persuade. In this lesson, we'll take a look at Aristotle's three appeals of pathos, ethos, and logos. We'll examine each one and see some of the fascinating ways they're used in the wild. Keep a sharp eye out for ways that you can use these appeals in your own writing as well. Let's explore. Now, to bring you all up to speed, an appeal in this context is a persuasive technique designed to gain the support of the audience. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher who was also called the father of logic. He wrote on all kinds of subjects, including math, science, and philosophy. One of his most important contributions was identifying three different types of persuasive appeals. Centuries later, writers and speakers still use these appeals to gain the support of their audience. In fact, it's exactly what these crocs do, so they can lie around all day. They write down their appeals and leave them scattered on the shore for people like us to find. Talk about working smarter, right? Let's take a look at the first persuasive technique these incredible creatures use. Pathos is an appeal to emotion. Think of those commercials where you see heart-wrenching images of sad puppies with the quiet music in the background. You know the ones. These ads are meant to make you feel sympathy and persuade you to donate to the cause. Pathos can be used to incite different emotions, such as sadness, fear, admiration, anger, all with the goal of getting others to support a particular cause or belief. I've spent the last few days collecting messages that I've found from these crocs, and let me tell ya, they know how to pull at your heartstrings. Let's see how they use pathos to try to get some dinner. As the sun sets over the marsh, I find myself alone, yearning for just a morsel to sustain me through the cold night. Pangs of hunger gnaw at me, leaving me too weak to hunt. I must rely on the kindness of a compassionate soul to bring me sustenance. Oh, wow. What an author. I feel like we need to get this poor little fella something to eat. What words here appeal to our emotions? By using words like alone and yearning, the crocodile makes us feel its loneliness and deep need for food. Pangs of hunger help us picture how badly it needs to eat, making us want to help. When the crocodile says it's too weak to hunt, it's playing on our sympathy, trying to make us see how tough its situation is. The mention of needing the kindness of a compassionate soul is the crocodile's method of asking for help in a way that makes us want to step in. These words are carefully picked to pull at our heartstrings and make us root for the crocodile. Pathos is a powerful tool to get people to support a cause and spring into action. But using emotions is only one way these crocodiles try to get their dinner. Let's look at another persuasive appeal that they use. Now, ethos is an appeal to ethics, morals, and character. Writers and speakers who use ethos are trying to convince others that they have the character and credibility to be trusted. A doctor trying to convince others to adopt a healthy diet could begin a speech by stating that they have 25 years of experience in nutritional research. This establishes that they know what they're talking about. Connecting to the audience and gaining their trust paves the way for a cause to be supported. Let's take a look at how a croc used this appeal. 
Over the years, I've earned a reputation among the marshes as a wise guardian, helping lost travelers and protecting our waters from harm. My long-standing commitment to the balance of our ecosystem is clear. I ask for your dietary contributions to sustain me so I can continue to uphold the safety and harmony of our shared home. What specific statements appeal to the audience's sense of ethics, morals, and character? How does the croc establish its credibility? In this note, the crocodile appeals to our ethics by highlighting its role as the marsh's guardian. It helps lost travelers. It stresses its long-standing commitment to the ecosystem, aligning itself with the moral values of stewardship. By asking for help to continue these efforts, the crocodile not only requests assistance, but also positions itself as a trustworthy and responsible figure. This approach effectively connects the crocodile's needs with our values, making a compelling case for why it deserves our support and our leftovers. I'd trust this little guy to watch over the swamp. Maybe I should get them something to eat. Let's take a look at our final appeal. Our last appeal is called Logos. This is an appeal to logic and reasoning. It guides the reader through a thought process that accomplishes the goal of persuasion. It even sounds like the word logic. For example, let's say you really wanted a new video game. You could argue that if you save $10 a week, you'll have enough to buy the game in two months. Plus, buying the game will keep you entertained and save money on other activities. So the logical choice is to save up and buy the game. Even if your audience is skeptical of the claim at the outset, an effective appeal to logic and reasoning can change their minds. Let's take a look at how the Crocs employ logos. Consider the energy I must expend when hunting, a process requiring hours of patience and strategy versus the minimal effort it takes you to provide a portion of your food. By assisting me, you reduce the risk in our shared environment, ensuring a balance that benefits us all with less effort and greater safety for every creature involved. Can you identify any logical connections the croc makes between their evidence and their conclusion? How do these connections strengthen the argument? The crocodile argues that sharing a little food with it saves a lot of effort compared to its hunting and makes the whole area safer and more balanced. By showing how this small help leads to big benefits for everyone, not just itself, the crocodile convinces us that helping it is a logical move. All of these techniques have been successful for these appeals crocs, as they've established a great home base here. They're able to get all of their meals through their use of Aristotle's appeals. Aren't words just incredible? In this lesson, get ready to do more appeal identification and analysis with speeches from famous orators. You'll also work through crafting your own persuasive speech using each type of appeal. Good luck this week. And there you have it, mates. A wild adventure through Aristotle's swamp, where we've seen firsthand how the art of persuasion isn't just for the humans. Our clever appeals crocodiles have shown us that, whether it's through emotional tug of pathos, the trustworthy ethos, or the clear-cut logic of logos, words hold the power to persuade, influence, and even secure dinner. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the Rhetoric Wrangler. Keep those eyes peeled and your wits sharp, because you never know when you'll need to wrangle some rhetoric of your own. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and above all, remember to always be clever. Hey, hey.